Thanks for watching On Call for All Kids. Today we're talking about mono. We'll be discussing what exactly mono is and why it's called the kissing disease, the classic symptoms of mono, and how it is treated. I am joined by Dr. Ebony Hunter. She's an emergency medicine physician at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. Great having you, Dr. Hunter. It's really good to be here, Ashley. Thanks for having me as well. And so what is mono? So mono is a common term for what we call infectious mononucleosis. It's usually caused by a virus called the Epstein-Barr virus. It's been around for a long time. It usually affects the upper respiratory tract and the throat. It can be pretty, pretty sneaky because it can be transmitted in asymptomatic people as well as symptomatic people. So what causes mono? Is it true it's from kissing? Because so many of us know it as the kissing disease. So that's only partially correct. So mono is transmitted in the saliva or any oral secretions. Or, so basically anything in your mouth can help transmit mono. So whether you use personal items of someone else's or you kiss them or you share utensils with them, those are how you usually will transmit mono. So while it can be from kissing, that's not the only way that we can transmit it. How do we know we have it? What are some of those symptoms? The typical three symptoms of mono are fever, pharyngitis, so sore throat, and lymphadenopathy, which are swollen lymph nodes. Other common symptoms can be a little bit of everything. So headache and fatigue, body aches, stomach aches and rash. So the symptoms will be different for every different person that has it. The biggest thing that concerns people is the sore throat and the swollen lymph nodes. The lymph nodes can get pretty big. The biggest thing for people to understand is that those lymph nodes are mainly on the outside of the throat and not the inside of the throat. So we don't really have to be concerned about throat closure. If your child is um, eating pretty well and breathing or drinking fluids and able to swallow, those lymph nodes are purely on the outside and the swelling hasn't progressed to the inside. Fatigue, which is the hallmark of mono, uh, can last as long as the symptoms can last, which could be seven to 10 days, or it can go up to six months. Um, and that's usually the difficult part about mono. It is impossible for us to predict who's going to have just acute fatigue throughout the illness or who's going to be the person that's going to have prolonged fatigue or chronic fatigue after mono even resolves. Well, how do you treat mono? So the treatment of mono is pretty supportive since it's a virus. There's no medicine that can make it go away. And since we know antibiotics don't work for viruses, those don't really help in the case of mono. Um, so we do things for supporting fever if you should have it. And you can use an over-the-counter uh, fever medication if that's no contraindications for your kids. And then um, also pain management, also over-the-counter if there's no contraindications. Preventing dehydration is very important because the appetite isn't that great. So really encouraging fluid intake, um, cool fluids will help soothe the throat as well. Um, steroids can be used in very severe cases, but that should be left to a provider to make that decision if your child would or wouldn't uh, benefit from steroids because it doesn't always help uh, the situation. Are there any specific concerns related to mono? Actually, there are. Um, mono has uh, the ability to make an organ we call the spleen um, pretty big. And the spleen usually lives over on the left side of our abdomen or stomach, and it hides under the rib cage, and that's where it's protected. And that's where a lot of blood is produced and changed over and things. Um, so it's a very 
blood rich organ, shall I say. And the reason why I'm describing that spleen so well is because when it gets bigger, it peeks out from under the ribs. Um, so if your child is pretty active in contact sports or wrestling, football, cheerleading, things like that, um, where there could be some type of abdominal um, impact or injury, then um, you want to keep them out of those sports for four weeks because any significant injury or trauma to that area could cause injury to the spleen or even worse, rupture of the spleen. And this is really rare, but it's a very serious complication. So we're very, very, very strict about um, keeping kids out of sports when they have mono. So finally, if we suspect our child has mono, what should we do? Well, if your child is pretty well appearing um, and just kind of having a little sore throat in a couple of symptoms, trying to do the supportive care that we mentioned before um, would be okay. And just routinely following up with your primary care provider would be ideal. If your child appears ill, having any difficulty breathing or talking, has signs of dehydration, um, which is not urinating, not drinking any fluids, then you probably need to see someone urgently or emergently so they can assess your child and see if there's any things that need to be done to help. Um, testing for mono is not always indicated, but there are two tests um, that can be done if your child needs to be tested, especially for the sake of sports. Um, one test is a swab and it's a rapid test. It has less um, accuracy, so it can have a lot of false negatives, but if it's positive, it's definitely positive. And then the other test is actually a blood test. Um, and that test is definitely more specific um, to determine whether or not your child has mono or not. And both of those are options to figure out if what your child is experiencing is mono. All right, Dr. Hunter, thank you so much for joining us today. It was great having you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget, you can also visit our website. It's hopkinsallchildrens.org slash newsroom. There you'll find a lot of great topics in pediatric health care and other wonderful resources for your family. We'll see you next week.